In episode 6, Sandy is writing to her fake mother, telling her how Hannah has finally gotten integrated after a pretty rough start, even allowing them to put that medicine in her arm. And Sandy finishes the message saying that it seems like Hannah realized there was no point in fighting a fight that she just couldn't win. That night, Carmichael gets a phone call from one of his bosses telling him that they have a big issue. There's a whistleblower. And the whistleblower has contacted a, an investigative journalist in England about going public with the Utrecht story. And Carmichael's boss tells him that it's about time these girls did what they're trained to do. So Carmichael brings in both Hannah and Jules and explains to them the mission that they're after this investigative journalist named Nicola Goff. And she is the one who's been contacted by this whistleblower who's going by the code name Tacitus. The goal is to find out both Tacitus' true identity while also not allowing Nicola to get the information. They're sending both girls to London where they'll act like they don't know each other but they'll carry out the mission. This is face and trigger. They tell the girls not to tell anybody about the mission, but they're teenage girls and everybody else finds out that they're being sent off. So while they tell them that they are being sent off, they don't tell them the severity of the mission or any information that was given to them in the dossier. And right before she leaves, Hannah has a private conversation with Clara, who seems like she's a little disappointed that she wasn't chosen to go on the mission with Hannah. Hannah looks at her and says, I thought this is what you wanted. I mean, after all, we could have went. We could have gone after your mother. But Clara cuts her off and says, my mother's dead. Marissa was lying. I'm happy here now. And Hannah says, I'm happy too. But it just seems like by both their facial expressions that neither of them are all that happy. The next day, both Hannah and Jules head off to London separately. And Hannah leaves first. And right before Jules leaves... Leo pulls her aside and has a conversation with her about keeping an eye on Hannah because they still don't really trust her. So both girls head off to London where they're posing as foreign exchange students at the university where Nicola Goff's wife teaches. And they both just so happen to be in Nicola Goff's wife's class. And this is kind of one of the reasons why Jules was chosen, because she's so damn woke. And she is truly in her element here, arguing politics, acting like a know-it-all. And she's kind of been tasked with buddying up to the teacher, while Hannah is just to complete the mission. And that's what Jules does. She asks the teacher to go get coffee, she buddies up with her, she meets Nicola, and she gets invited to a party that they're having at their house with a bunch of other political philosophers. So later that day, Jules tells Hannah, okay, I'm getting you in there, but it's up to you to actually get the information. They also have a conversation about how how natural this feels for Jules about how she went through all these training missions but it really does feel like nothing more than a training mission and she's kind of surprised she then wonders aloud huh I wonder if Sandy's going through the same thing and Hannah looks perplexed and says what do you mean Jules realized that she kind of screwed up by saying that but Hannah says no 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 There's no secrets between us. We're on the same team. What are you talking about? And Jules reveals to Hannah that both Clara and Sandy were sent to Barcelona to kind of cover both tracks of this thing. And in Barcelona, Sandy is set up as a foreign exchange student while Clara is posing as an American teenager who took a year off to kind of travel the world. And they're just kind of waiting to be briefed on what they're supposed to do. Later that day in London, as Hannah is walking around, she gets approached by Mannion. He introduces himself formally, and then it goes on to explain that he works for a group that is trying to expose Utrex. And maybe more importantly, the organization behind Utrex. Marissa called him when she found out about the Meadows, and whoever Hannah is involved with, they're pretty dangerous people, and he wants to know what they have her doing there. Hannah brushes it off and says, don't bother me, I'm working for them now. But Mannion screams back at her, I will be here every day, same time. And this little impromptu meeting caused Hannah to be late for Nicola Golf's wife's house party. So Jules is able to get her in there. Now it's on to Hannah. And she's looking around the party and finds Nicola Golf drinking alone in the kitchen. And Nicola asks if she's a student and Hannah says yes. And Nicola explains that this isn't really her thing, parties. Hannah starts asking about what she does, knowing the whole time that she's an investigative journalist, but trying to buddy up to her. And when Nicola reveals that she's an investigative journalist, Hannah asks, how did you get into that? But the conversation is interrupted when Nicola gets a phone call and it seems to be a private matter because she steps outside to take it. But when she does, Hannah follows her and from a distance is able to hear that she is on the phone with Tacitus. And Nicola and Tacitus are planning on meeting at a hotel in Barcelona in two days. So with this information, Hannah goes sneaking back into the house, going up to Nicola's office, and finding her private notebook. She quickly takes a bunch of pictures of the notes and uploads it to Terry back at the Meadows. Hannah is quickly able to get downstairs back in the kitchen without being caught. And when Nicola comes back in the kitchen, she says, oh, where were we? That's right, you wanted to know how I got into this. And she goes on to tell Hannah that she was working on a story in Ireland about these women who were basically kidnapped and held against their will and really never allowed to leave. They were forced to have babies and they even lost those babies. Some of them were taken as babies. And the whole story seems eerily familiar. 
it seems a lot like this was Utrex. And it's got Hannah thinking a bit. Because this story just seems to hit really close to home for Hannah. But back at the Meadows, Terry was able to take those pictures that Hannah uploaded and decipher the code that Nicola was using. And through a quick search, she was able to discern that there is one American exchange student in the University of Barcelona who is studying politics. And she just so happens to be the daughter of a military lawyer that has enough clearance to know what's going on with Utrecht. So they're pretty sure that Tacitus is this girl's father. And the guy is named Robert Gelder. So Leo heads into Carmichael's office and lets him know that they're pretty sure Tacitus is this guy named Robert Gelder. But by Carmichael's facial reaction, you can tell that Carmichael knows that this is bad news. Leo asks him, did you know him? And Carmichael reveals that while he doesn't know him personally, he knows the name. He instructs Leo to monitor Robert Gelder and find out if he buys a ticket for Barcelona. As soon as he does, Carmichael wants to be alerted. And Leo says, yeah, we've been doing that. But Carmichael snaps back at him, do it every hour. And it seems obvious that Gelder knows knows something. And when Leo asks Carmichael, what exactly does this guy know? Carmichael just doesn't say anything, sending Leo on his way. So the Meadows group gives both Clara and Sandy their orders to find this girl in the University of Barcelona. And it's on Sandy to kind of befriend her and then covertly introduce Clara to her group. And Sandy is able to do that by stealing the girl's wallet and then acting like she found it. And when the girl, along with her friend, find out that Sandy's American, they invite her over to get some lunch, hang out, and now they're in. Now back in London, Jules and Hannah have been giving the order to intercept Nicola Golf. Do not let her get on the flight to Barcelona. Jules even gives Hannah a quote book that isn't a book at all. It's a gun with a silencer because Hannah will be the one that's going to take Nicola out. But Hannah doesn't feel like this is the right thing to do and ends up meeting up with Mannion and telling him all the details, how they're going to go after Nicola Golf, how she's leaving tomorrow. And Mannion instructs her to follow him, but do so at a distance, six feet apart, as to not cause suspicion. And they walk into this black site that's posed as a barbershop, where Mannion introduces Hannah to his other associate, a woman named Rachel. And right behind Rachel and Mannion is this cork board with a bunch of pictures and information. And the pictures include Eric Heller, Marissa Viegler, Carmichael. It's a who's who of the show. And they explain to Hannah that Utrecht was founded by this pioneer group, which really was a splinter cell of nationalist radicals in the CIA. And Mannion and Rachel's group are pretty sure that the pioneers are ready to use Utrecht to carry out a bunch of assassinations around the world. And that Tacitus knows who's on that hit list. Now this is a lot of information to process and Hannah leaves, but as she's leaving, she gets caught by Jules, who from across the street is taking pictures of her and calls Leo and says, yeah, I think I have a friend problem. So Leo goes to Carmichael about what to do about her, but Terry runs in because Robert Gelder has booked a flight to Barcelona. After Carmichael says, thanks, you did great work, and Terry leaves, they continue to talk about what to do with Hannah. And Leo says, do you want me to talk to her? But Carmichael is done talking. He wants Hannah gone. He's ready to cut bait, and he instructs Leo to get rid of her. They then send both Clara and Sandy Robert Gelder's flight information. It's kind of awkward because they're hanging out with Robert's daughter at karaoke when they get it. The next day, both Hannah and Jules are walking over to the train to intercept Nicola golf and Jules is explaining how she's gonna act like she just bumped into Nicola golf while Hannah takes her out but right behind them is Mannion they get to the train platform and Jules explains how she's gonna be in the last train car but when the train arrives Hannah pushes Jules back points a gun in her face and won't allow her on and Jules gladly backs up but when Hannah looks around the train she realizes that Nicola golf isn't on it it's just these two random people and then she looks back at Jules who's on the platform who is now smiling and waving at her because the doors are closing and Hannah has been set up. And those two people on the train, well, they're hitmen who were sent by the Pioneer group to kill Hannah. But since Hannah is a savage, she's able to take both of them out. The problem is the train was moving, and now she's at the next station. So Hannah tries to run back to the original station that she was at. But after the train left, Mannion continued to follow Jules. But Jules was onto him, and she grabs him and shoots him and kills him. And on the platform, along with the help of Leo, Jules is able to kill Nicola Goff and get on the train without being caught. So when Hannah eventually arrives back at the station, the first body she sees is Mannion's. And she kneels down close to it and takes his cell phone. And then she gets to the train platform and sees the body of Nicola Goff. And she is visibly upset knowing that she was just too late to save her. And Robert Gelder arrives in Barcelona having no idea that Nicola Goff is dead and also having no idea that he has been watched by Clara. And then finally there's the issue of Marissa Viegler 
who was ironically taken to the same black site that they were trying to interrogate Hannah at back in season one. And they've been trying to beat the truth out of Marissa, but she's been staying steadfast, not giving them any information. They were asking Marissa who was helping her, about Hannah, but Marissa keeps acting like she doesn't know what they're talking about. At one point, though, one of the guards comes into her cell and tells her, just wait a little bit longer, we're going to get you out of this. But when the other guard comes in the room, he has to play the part and ends up smacking her in the face and walking out. But it's definitely not an ideal circumstance for Marissa Vigler at the moment. Thank you for watching this recap. If you do not see the next one up in the corner right there on the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up shortly. Please consider following the channel. That'd be cool. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, there's a thumbs down button for a reason.